Hello and welcome back to another class guide. My name is Heiken and today we're revisiting War Tales classes. These are deep dive guides. I am doing regular guides with precise, on point, no BS, no repetition mode where we get straight to the point. I'm revisiting each of the classes mainly because a lot has changed. Helmets have come out since I released the original class guides. The Pugilist has been uh, released and the fourth class skill has been released meaning 7th uh, and 5th levels got new class skills. And I got a couple of questions from the original guide. So this is not a replacement of the original guide. This is seemingly just an add-on uh, with alternative builds. Uh, the current guide will go through two additional builds. Sometimes they are variations of the original build. Sometimes they are actually new builds. And we're going to see how they fare. On top of that, I want to add some gameplay footage, so stay tuned to see how the classes are actually playing out. Let's jump right into it. Today we're going to take a look at the Spearman. As always, I brought two builds with me. The first one will be an AoE build uh, with a Harpenier. The second one will be a uh, more supportive build with a Pikeman. Both of them are interesting builds in their own regard. So let's take a look at how we're going to build them. Attributes first, then equipment, and then we're going into the skills. Let's start with the attributes, shall we? Very similar to others, we want to start with uh, willpower, get it up to the 15 points uh, base limit, so that with willpower we do have that cheat death ability, and then we're going to go up to 22 movement. You could get away, I think, with 20, but 22 is the sweet spot for me because with the crit rune improvements, we will need a little bit more movement as we're going to lose three of them with our equipment. Everything else goes into critical strike. Uh, you can see even with very, very suboptimal uh, specializations, in this case, a little bit of strength and a little bit of constitution, you still get a very respectable critical uh, strike rating. Um, just talking about critical uh, strike, a bloodthirsty with 30% critical strike as a trait isn't bad. You might want to skill into it. Uh, you can get a path bonus uh, for uh, the Scoundrel uh, path where uh, you get a 5% critical hit chance per wanted level. Um, that is where the other um, uh, crit is coming from. And then finally, we're going to talk about the equipment of how you get even more. One further source of critical uh, um, uh, hits and critical strike is food, stuffed cabbage for increased critical hit and uh, beer infused wolf ribs for increased critical damage are uh, staples in anyone's uh, um, playthrough. And that is how you pretty much get 100% critical uh, hit, even with very, very basic equipment and without any optimization needed. So let's look at the equipment since we already speak about that. All right, we're going to the equipment. Equipment, as always, is base equipment so that the actual build carries the run and not the equipment. So you can get just as well equipped as I did here um, by simply crafting your stuff. We have a self-crafted spear, we have a self-crafted medium armor, a self-crafted helmet, and a self-crafted trinket. So what's the trick of this build or what do I want to achieve with it? This build here, uh, the Harpenier, is really a debuffing build. Uh, and could work very well specifically on higher difficulties or against enemies with higher hit point pools. We're going to go in with Assassin Strychnine, which is the imprint that increases 25% more damage against poisoned units. So not only do you, uh, we deal more damage uh, to enemies, but also, uh, but also if we're uh, attacking already poisoned units, uh, this is going to deal even more damage to them. Um, for the Arcadian Steel um, Spoiler, we have three times Mir's Brooch, which is 15% uh, critical hit increase at the expense of minus one movement, which is why you want to add up uh, the movement to 22, so that you still have plenty of movement to go around. And as the oils, we're going in with a Poison Oil, uh, which has as a base uh, the 50% chance to apply poison, 
with the poisonous oil concentrate, we're having another 50%, so that's a 100% uh, chance to apply oil. The piercing throw in itself already applies bleeding, so uh, keep that in mind. All of the units that are going to be piercing thrown will then be poisoned and are bleeding, which nicely brings us to a nice, um, a nice little find on the knowledge tab. If you have an alchemist and you have uh, um, uh, created the bleeding oil and the poison oil and then also got uh, the belt accessory, you will have the option for masteries, you, which cost one uh, knowledge point each, but are quite worth it. The poison mastery increases poison hit points uh, um, from five to 6%. Bleeding is increased from 20 to 25 percent and burning is increased from uh, 10 to 15 uh, percent respectively. So that's not too shabby if you uh, think about it. And uh, really what that does is uh, the, both of the debuffs with the masteries all of a sudden do not only account for 5 but 6 percent on the poison stack and for 25 uh, 20 percent, uh, 25 percent actually on uh, the uh, on the bleeding stack. So that's a lot of maximum damage that you could get. Uh, think about uh, fighting bears and all of a sudden you're hitting two or three of them. Then this skill doesn't only deal damage, but the rider effects will be absolutely preposterous. On top of it, uh, I put infectious oil uh, onto it. Every time a skill deals damage, it has a 50% uh, chance to apply a status effect inflicting essentially another 50% of that attack. So that's not bad, you could do that, or alternatively, if you don't feel like it, you could remove uh, the infectious oil and go completely crazy uh, with the acidic oil and really have burning on top of it. So now we have all of the three abilities, bleeding uh, from the throw, then poison, and then burning on top of it. Uh, keep in mind burning might spread over to your own allies, but overall it's still worth uh, to have that multi debuff build. Uh, this ties out very nicely with any combination uh, that requires to have multiple debuffs on uh, the enemy and will just generally be an absolute menace against higher level enemies. So very nice uh, setup for the build. Let's take a look at the actual skills. Valorous support, um, it is an option for the Spearman to always create a little bit of Valor, just go next to an ally, get that extra Valor, and here we go. We're uh, going to make this one here, or the first build, a Harponier, uh, which really has the piercing throw ability. Keep in mind, Harponier works well together with aim, so you can throw further with the aim skill, if you want to spend that extra uh, that extra valor point, uh, you will pierce even further. Uh, there are hundreds of situations where enemy are lined up. If you are quick enough, you can just hit all of them with a nice little harpooning uh, strike, and all of a sudden, every single one of them is bleeding, is poisoned, and is burning on top of it. So really, really good. One other way that you could uh, go about it if you uh, feel like it is actually the slow down um, uh, oil, which uh, would be a bit more crowd controlly. Uh, so you could uh, throw through them and then all of them are slowed down. Now, in terms of the uh, further um, skills that you want to take, it, um, Typically, I'm going with Team Spirit first because it's an easy way of getting 30% damage increase. Um, if possible, I'm standing next to an ally, uh, then using the Harponier and have uh, therefore the 30% damage increase. Then I go into preparedness uh, with this build. If the unit ends its turn while not engaged in combat, it gains fury and repost. Repost really makes it unattractive for enemies to engage you because you immediately counterattack, and Fury means the damage of the next attack is increased by 50%. That also means the next Harponeering throw uh, in the next round or any other ability. So it's really good for the follow-up for round number two. Unstoppable, very, very strong ability um, to just get into the right position. You can pass through enemies as well. <clears throat> really uh, strong overall. And then as the class specialization, I took Sweet Spot, 
ranged attacks apply destabilization for one round and have a 40% extra chance to be critical uh, hits. Range attacks is not only harponeering, but also whenever you are not um, adjacent to an enemy. So that is a neat little feature. Keep that in mind what that does with a harponeering. You only have you 30% more damage on it, but you also reduce the guard to zero for one round. And then you have a 40% extra chance for critical um, hits, which really puts this here far, far above 100%. So uh, the uh, sweet spot is a nice complementary effect for the entire build. On a normal path, I still think I would go for brutality. Um, but if you feel you want that extra crit chance and the destabilization early, you might as well go into sweet spot, then preparedness and use team spirit is the class specialization. Let's see how the build plays out. Let's take a look at the Spearman in action. We do have a nice little setup here uh, with enemies that are level 14. So they are far beyond, uh, beyond our levels. We have engaged the guards and these are quite hardcore enemies. So uh, what we're going to do is we want uh, to use the harponeer. The normal harponeer is only that far. I mentioned we're going to use aim. All of a sudden we're getting far more value out of it. And let's take a look at the moment what just happened. Okay, so uh, we have applied bleeding, 20%, 25% uh, damage. Uh, we have applied poison and we have applied a burning on top of every single one of them. 25, 15 and another six points of damage. So we're almost at 50% uh, uh, damage. You see 0% guard here, 0% uh, guard there. Um, and this guy is also down to 0%. The only reason why this foot soldier survived is he, because um, he uh, was lucky to not be engaged immediately. We're going to move slightly away. Are pushing him back. That destabilizes him as a ranged attack as well. And he's now down to 0% guard. So we've removed all of the guard uh, possible from the enemies and are now um, moving all the way next to one of our uh, characters, uh, providing them brutality. You know what? Um, this is not a bad position to even stand in. Anyways, uh, let's take a, a look once these guys are uh, going to take their damage, how heavy it actually hits. Good, let's see that damage from uh, the spearmen. You have seen uh, they were quite debuffed and all of a sudden they took 222 points of damage. He still has that 60% guard, but look at that. I mean, just look at the amount of damage that he took. One more round and he's gone, which means this guy is dead, this guy is dead, and this guy is dead. They are dead men walking, they just don't know it yet. All right, time for the second build of our Spearman, and this time we're going, we'll go with the Pikeman. The Pikeman is a bit different. It's an area control build, uh, which could even be a tank in its own regard to a degree, but it functions really well um, in the second line at choke points in particular, uh, where you can hold the line and make sure that no one, and I mean no one, really can go through you. So we are, um, again, having the same principle, willpower to 15, movement up to 20, 22, um, and then we're going giving the rest into critical hit. With food, this here is going to be 100% critical hit. Um, so I want to showcase the equipment as always, standard equipment, nothing fancy here. We're going to use assistance strike, uh, strike nine because we're going to poison enemies and therefore deal more damage against uh, them. We're going to use Mir's Brooch three times for the extra critical hit. And we're going to use the Acadian uh, Spear with poison oil and the poison oil concentrate. So very similar to the first build. I left the uh, flaming oil on top of it just so uh, that there is a good chance that they are also burning because they are not adjacent to you. That's not a problem. You might as well use bleeding oil uh, instead or any, anything that really uh, floats your boat. Doesn't matter too much as the build in itself already takes care of guard and 
the poison together with uh, the assassin strike nine and uh, the poisonous oil concentrate that in itself is a very very solid debuffing and counterplay option going to crit a lot so that um, will also be a great option so how does the build look from uh, the actual skills skills on this build will be similar we're starting with valorous support to generate a bit extra valor uh, we're going to oftentimes be placed in the second line sometimes we need to hold choke points we're going to go into spear wall which is a costly but interesting uh, skill because this unit here will perform two attacks of opportunity and stop uh, the respective enemies that want to go through a target area. This is great to not even let your front line be engaged or to hold down a corridor all by themselves. Mind you, whenever they do it, it counts as a ranged attack, which is bringing us nicely into sweet spot because every time they do it, they will create destabilization, removing guard completely and have another 40% extra chance to crit. So with that, we're already way over 100% crit. We're then going into preparedness, which allows us to get fury and repost at the end of the turn. Fury mainly for the following turns to deal more damage, but repost also uh, in case someone actually manages to get to us uh, that uh, we still have the option to fight back. We're using Unstoppable to position ourselves very well as we can pass through enemies and then use the class specialization into uh, this time fervent uh, support each time an adjacent ally is attacked so if we're in the second uh, column that might be just the tank if we haven't uh, put up a zone we are going to retaliate uh, with 78 points of damage now this is not too bad for uh, situations where your tank is going to engage and disengage and aggro imagine a situation where an enemy is going to come into your tank you're already standing uh, there with your spearmen Let's say the zone isn't uh, isn't up, so enemy comes up to your tank. Uh, tank uh, normally begins to uh, take damage. You make a ranged attack, so you destabilize the enemy and you're going to counter attack. Then it's the tank's turn. Tank switches on and off, as in engages and disengages. And every time they take an attack, uh, meaning the tank takes an attack, you make sure that you are um, retaliating with your spear. So that's really a strong ability. If you do have two tanks uh, adjacent to each other and you are standing next to both of them, then you can even hit more enemies with it. It's a classical spearman from the uh, second row uh, that makes uh, this build uh, very, very strong. Feverant uh, support, really good, combined with uh, the spear wall, um, maybe spear wall even into uh, the other direction and all of a sudden you do have a impenetrable fortress where on the one hand you have tanks and you can take off opportunity and on the other side no one uh, can come in so lots of opportunities with this nice build let's see how it plays out all right time to look at a concrete situation we got the spearman and we got a nice little battle down here. Our tanks have engaged uh, the bottom line uh, there or the front on the bottom. And we do have very strong, highly equipped, out-leveled enemies. Uh, so the worst that could happen to us. And we do have an open flank. So what are we really going to do about that? Well, uh, fear not. Although it would be nice to just go down here. I think there are still oppor uh, opportunities that we can do uh, regardless. So for starters, we don't want to engage with any one of them. We're instead going to push them a little bit back and are going to reduce uh, the first guy's armor uh, guard to zero. And then we're really trying to find that sweet spot, maybe over here, where um, maybe a little bit further to the bottom, where we are letting them come to us. Um, and are uh, still making sure that our flank is well protected. So something along the lines of this here should be fine. And we're going to see how it actually plays out. We get one uh, Valor and you can see massive amount of damage coming in uh, just from the destabilizing uh, strike. If we would uh, have more people come in, for instance, uh, the next enemy, then of course 
this here uh, will be even better. So the next enemy that is coming in, the te uh, technician, we're going to take a look if he even walks into that as well so that we get the full value out of the two attacks of opportunity. We have repost, so even if a third one would then engage the spearman, spearman would still be able to uh, fight back. Just look at the amount of damage that he dealt to the defender. Mind you, on top of it, the defender is destabilized and does have uh, poison, uh, so continues to lose hit points. And these are ones of the really worst defenders uh, overall because they do have measured response, which means if you are in melee and you're performing a critical hit, they get an attack of opportunity, but no such thing uh, with a spearman as they are holding the front line very, very tight. Well done. All right, we're done with the build guide and deep dive uh, to the specific class. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like guides, I do have plenty of them for War Tales. If you enjoyed what you've seen and took value out of it, I would appreciate if you leave a like and a comment uh, down below. That always helps to propel the videos and helps the channel. And it's a little bit of given, uh, given back. Thanks for watching. See you on the next guide and have a great day. Bye bye.